Happy New Year. Welcome to 2020 and episode 17 of this Brockway Skiff build. I'm going to jump right into it here so this video won't be too long. This is an extra long one inch brass drain tube that I ordered from Fisheries Supply. Here I am scuffing it a bit with 100 grit sandpaper. This will give the epoxy a better mechanical bond to the outside of the tube. You could put it in with a 3M 5200 sealant. I'm just choosing to use epoxy. Uh, there's also a tool so you can make a flange on both ends. There's one that the manufacturer makes and you can make one on the other end. I typically don't do that. I just install them with sealant or better yet epoxy. I spread the thickened epoxy all around the inside of the hole we drilled in the previous episode. Remember this hole goes through the transom and it's our drain, our bilge drain. Um, I, I used some of the epoxy inside the hole and then spread some on the outside of the tube. I also blocked the end of the tube with some tape just so the epoxy doesn't go inside the tube and it forces it as you slide this through the hole. I slid it in from the inside of the boat, pushed it out. Uh, it forces the epoxy, uh, instead of entering the tube, it forces it to go around the outside of the tube and uh, make a nice cylinder of epoxy all the way around the tube between the wood and the exterior of the tube is the idea. On the interior, the drain tube is fully seated into the hole that was lathered in epoxy. It's completely sealed by a ring of epoxy that squeezed out around there. And then I just took my finger with a latex glove and wiped the excess out of there. I used some of the leftover epoxy to install the bow eye. You could also use 3M 5200 marine adhesive sealant here just as well. On the interior where that bow eye goes through the stem, I drilled a 1 and 1 8 inch diameter spot face about an inch deep into the stem based on the, the length, the threaded length of my bow eye. I also didn't want the threaded portion of the bow eye sticking above the surface of the stem just for safety so that your knuckles don't, don't bang against that and nothing gets wrapped around it. And I have enough room in there to, to fit a couple washers and the nut to, to hold it all nice and tight and secure. The next day I installed a cutoff wheel, a metal cutoff wheel on my angle grinder. And then I cut off the portion of the tube that was sticking out beyond the transom as close as I dared. I then installed a flap disc on the angle grinder and sanded everything flush. I then mixed up my favorite green epoxy filler and spread it around the hole and I also saw a ding down here that I filled. I also spread some around the bow eye just so I can contour and, and ferret in nice. On the starboard side panel, the bad side, I shouldn't say bad side, the lower grade veneer of the plywood is facing the exterior or is on the exterior of the boat. I used some of the green filler to fill in uh, the deep areas of the grain. I just hit the worst locations. I had no intention of making the finish on this boat an art project. It is a work boat. I'm just filling the really deep, grooved, and pitted areas. The next day I sanded the filler flush that was I put around the drain tube and that ding down here. And also around the bow eye and the starboard side of the boat. In a previous episode, I mistakenly said I applied three coats of CPEZ to the sides. I actually held off applying the third and final coat until the day before I was ready to apply the primer to the side of the boat. I like to put my final coat of CPEZ down 
24 hours before I paint because the epoxy in the resin of the CPEZ continues to cure and it will chemically bond to the paint or the primer in this case that I'm using. Here's the port side after the third coat of clear penetrating epoxy sealer. Here's the starboard side. Once I exhausted my remaining supply of primer by rolling it on, I decided to spray the remainder. So I moved the boat to the middle bay of the garage to make masking of the, off of the boat and the floor easier. I screwed a 2x4 to the stern post. Here it is near the floor. I just attached it with two screws. And then I slid this yellow card in there. there. I, I picked up this end of the, of the boat, tilted it up, and then kicked this cart underneath the 2x4. This nicely supported the stern and gave it wheels like a shopping cart. At the bow, my neighbor's son, who plays college football, helped me place the stem into this bucket of my shop vac. This worked surprisingly well. I easily rolled the boat out of the end bay single-handedly and rolled it back into the center bay. Here's the boat after I rolled on the first coat of primer filler. Again, I reiterate, I am not using the primer to promote adhesion of the paint. I am using the primer to fill in defects. It is perfectly acceptable to skip the primer phase entirely. I won't be using primer on the interior of the boat. In case you are wondering, here is the aerosol version of the primer I sprayed on the boat. You can just make out the can I was using previously that I was rolling on. Uh, I didn't like as I stated in the previous episode, I did not like the the roll the the can, the primer in the can, because it's really formulated to spray out of a gun and not meant to roll on, and it was difficult to roll on. So in the future, if I want to use primer filler, I'll just stick to the aerosol cans. And here's a tip for you: whenever you use these Rust-Oleum cans. Take a look and see if you see a black mark on the rim of the can. If you do, it's a good practice to rotate the nozzle so that the spray tip aligns with that black dot on the rim. Here's a close-up of uh, a long scratch and there's a ding here in the side of the boat after I rolled on the primer. As you prime, you'll begin to see all kinds of defects you didn't notice before. Usually I let the first coat dry and then I fill these in with a, a Bondo, an automotive polyester based body filler. However, for small defects and when you want to do it a little quicker, uh, you can cheat by laying on the primer really thick. You just blast on that filler primer just locally around the area where the defects are. Then just take a putty knife, any size will do, whatever you're comfortable with, and trowel across the surface. It's amazing but you can actually press that filler into the defects and it works pretty good. It will usually fill in the pit scratches and dings pretty well. The primer will need a bit more sanding in this area depending on how well you trowel because you can leave trowel marks. Uh, you can see them right here in this picture right along there. So you'll need to do a little bit of sanding there. But it sands fairly easy. It sands easier than Bondo. It sands easier than the green filler. So this is just a little trick you may find useful someday. After rolling on the first coat, I sprayed about three cans on each side of the boat. And here she is after I finished priming. 
I did all the priming, uh, the rolling on of the first coat and the spraying on of additional primer on each side. I did it all in one, one day. The next day, here is the boat after wet sanding with 400 grit. Next comes paint for the sides. I thought sunburst yellow, you can see it right here on the can, gloss sunburst yellow would be the best match for the yellow beach rollers that I plan to mount along the gunnels. Remember those are the extra flotation and also act as the fenders for the boat. They're yellow, might as well paint the boat yellow. I used about one and a half cans of this aerosol and I'll tell you why I chose to use aerosol on part of the paint job here in a second. And I rolled out about half of this can. This can is a one quart can. This picture was taken after the first coat. So you can see eh, there's a little bit of the gray primer showing through. You can't see it too much in this picture, but you could definitely see it um, in real life. Uh, the next day I went and there's always bugs that are going to land in your paint job. Uh, so you, you can sand those out and then the dust nibs or the lint from your cloths or whatever you use to wipe down the boat. You can sand all those away with a little 400 grit paper and water uh, wet sanding. And then once you're happy with that, that's the beauty of this paint is the next day you can sand out any runs or defects usually and then carry on. So after I did that, took out the worst of the defects, bugs and nibs, I rolled on the second coat. It's very forgiving paint. I, I really like the oil-based paint. So here it is at the bow. There's our bow eye. I had masked that off so I didn't get paint all over it. I think the paint job came out pretty decent. Here you can actually see the reflection of the truck, the stripes here in the door. You could just see them right here on the side panel. Pretty shiny stuff. Once the boat is on a trailer, I may give the whole boat a quick uh, rub and polish, but uh, we'll see. It looks pretty good right now. Well, that is it for this episode. I will let the paint cure for about a week or so here before I manhandle this boat and getting it right side up. So stay tuned for that, the rollover, in the next episode. Thanks for watching, Happy New Year, and God bless you.